let's move on and let's uh, also uh, hear it out from Soma Mandal, Chairman at Steel Authority of India. Hello and welcome to ET Interview. The steel sector literally has been on a tear. Steel prices are at a record high and steel companies are indicating very proudly that it's never been so good for them. So how should one read into the current demand and price surge in the steel sector? Is this just a demand supply mismatch which had got created post the lockdown and which will get normalized or the strength and the demand is here to stay. Now, just to remind our viewers, steel is a global commodity. So whatever we discuss today has to be looked in context of what is happening in global markets. So to discuss all that and much more, where steel prices are headed, where sale is headed and what we should expect now from the PSU sector given that the entire Indian PSU sector is going through a massive reboot. It gives me great pleasure to bring on board the chairman of uh, SALE, Ms. Suma Mondal, to talk about uh, her thoughts on the steel sector and on the company. Ms. Mondal, good morning. This is Nikunj Dalmia from ET Now. It's your first morning, time uh, we're interacting with you on ET Now. So very warm welcome to you and really appreciate it. My introduction, I guess, was the first question, which is that it's never been so good for steel companies. Are you personally surprised with the underlying demand and the pricing trend currently which steel companies are reporting? Uh, if you say whether I'm surprised, not exactly surprised, but happy that the situation is like this. Uh, you see, we would expect the demand to continue for some time. There are some reasons why the prices are among the highest in the decade. One is there has been a supply side constraint uh, post COVID, uh, where uh, I'm even in the second and third phase of COVID wave, which has impacted the ramping up of capacities in certain par parts of the world. Uh, secondly, China is expected to close down some inefficient uh, units uh, because of because they have a target of reducing the carbon footprint. Secondly, the demand pickup in auto sector, construction sector, even the wild goods sector, and the government policies in various, uh, in India, China, and even in the US, has put a thrust in the demand also. And thirdly, and most important is the raw material supply constraints, the prices of iron ore. All these three points are majorly driving the steel prices and the demand also. Do you see enough and more visibility for next one or two quarters? Uh, the next one or two quarters appear to remain the same. If you see at higher prices, many unviable and viable and closed capacities may open up, thus increasing supplies. Once this happens, the supply constraint would be, see a little of ease and put some downward pressure on prices. Uh, as glo globally, uh, we are more in control with COVID and the vaccination drivers on, but we would see some pickup in the productions also, which have been right now hampered by the uh, COVID situation all around the world. Now, last couple of years have been tough for sale. You've done a massive restructuring and a big reboot on the employee cost front. Given that currently steel prices are at a record high, realizations are at a record high, I would assume that cash flows would increase immensely. How are you looking at capitalizing the strong steel environment and steel prices to improve sales balance sheet? See, our focus right now has been on reducing our leverage position. We were highly leveraged in the month of April, uh, we had reached around, uh, borrowings had reached around 50, 52,000 crores. By December, we had been able to reduce that to 45,000 crores. And as of 31st March this year, we are a little over 35,000 crores. So uh, balance sheets, total focus on balance sheet. And uh, coupled with our increased volume, thrust on uh, increasing our efficiencies, reducing cost, techno-economics uh, improvement, we would expect 
a lot of improvement in our balance sheet and our uh, and our borrowings also improvement in our leverage position so the current level of about 35000 crore of debt is that a comfortable position for sale or the aim is to bring it below 30000 we want to start a next phase of expansion also we have a debt stop study done we have the land bank with us so the moment we are uh, we are able to reduce it by a few more thousand crores we are planning our next phase of expansion mr mondal why is the conversion cost for sale or steel authority so high and i'm using the conversion cost which your peers currently have and how are you planning to address it one of the main uh, reason for cost higher cost is uh, the uh, wages and salary and uh, at uh, higher volumes this would naturally go down our techno economics with the new facilities which have come in are improving every year so i would expect see we cannot do too much on reducing our uh, wages at the salary bill but yes we could reduce our manpower we are we are not re- at the amount of man- amount of superannuation which is which is happening we are not recruiting as much so with a more more uh, balanced approach of recruitment and also increasing our volumes we would reduce our uh, our cost of uh, production a conversion cost where do you see employee cost as total percentage of your cost settling i mean in the medium term and in the long term it would be difficult to say we would not be able to reduce too much reason is our uh, we have a new our, our uh, salary negotiation wage negotiations going on so the amount which we would increase uh, in the in the wages would uh, are uh, would re- would uh, have any upward impact at the same time since the cost of production uh, co- the number uh, number of manpower would reduce and the volumes would increase it would act both ways it would be, it would more or less neutralize okay so just to i don't want to get this one wrong what you confirming to us is that if steel prices go by 1000 rupees per ton it has potential to move your ebitda by about 10% see i have not actually i have not done the calculation so i would not be able to say right now but it uh, movement of prices by 1000 would surely impact our uh, it's a big impact on our ebitda because it would entirely add to ebitda okay now uh, miss mondel it has taken slightly longer than expected but the expansion plan to take uh, steel capacity from 13 million ton to 21 million ton is done what is the plan to ramp up the utilization see if you if you see the annualized crude steel production of the month of march we have morally less reached our uh, crude steel capacity nearly not in, so i would say our crude steel capacity we are capable of producing right now our our uh, planned capacity expansion whatever we had for so far as crude steel goes we st- still have to ramp up our mills for the uh, so that a basket of uh, semis reduces if one looks at the realization uh, miss model realizations for domestic market and realization for the export market the export realizations currently are very strong and they're better than domestic realization would sale be thinking on or would steel authority be thinking on lines of exports more uh, our first uh, aim is to meet the demand of the domestic market and also have a strategic presence in the export market so we would continue to do this how exactly do you think next 3 years for steel authority would be different from the last 3 years last 3 years was about uh, a commodity cycle which was against you and it was also about restructuring and putting new processes into play next 3 years how do you see things uh, optically and dramatically changing see in the past the cycles have been very small if you see 18 19 was a good year 19 20 was not and then 2021 first 6 months was 3 months or 6 months wasn't great but then it just picked up post covid so next 3 years i would expect that the demand would continue at least uh, for next 2 years or so the demand would continue in the same way production the major capacity is also to really see is not coming up around the world other than in india so i would expect that the demand and prices would remain strong and uh, so far as sale is concerned what we need to do is plan out our next phase with our lower leverage position 
more comfortable in our borrowings, we would plan out our next phase of expansion.